that you've been doing with us. We thank you, God, for your move of your spirit. We thank you, God, that this time is now, and this time is so precious in your sight. It's so precious to heaven, and it's so feared by hell. We thank you, God, for that in its entirety. Don't you guys love that last song that we sung? It's fantastic. You know, there was a recent news story in Massachusetts. There was a church that burned down. The inferno was amazing. There's pictures of it. It was just burnt to the ground, rubble, but something survived all that. And that something is a picture of Jesus, survived the whole thing. But in that picture, it's just Jesus. It's clouds behind him, and it's Jesus. And, and he looks very pleased and in love with you. And that's, that's how that happens. So it's similar to kind of what God's been saying to us. You know, the church, it has to lose every bit of self, and it has to just look like Jesus. And I just thought that was interesting. So tonight I'm going to be teaching on, I've titled it, A Call to Arms. And it's really going to go into where God is at what God expects out of us. And I was trying to get this teaching together, and I, I had some other ideas, but it wasn't working. And in God's own way, he kind of pushed all my papers off the desk so where I had to start over. And and he kind of spoke to me for a right now word. Remember when Pastor Barbara was saying, God wants to give you a right now word. And the past few teachings have been on the time and season being in time with God, in his time zone, in his time frame. And really what this is doing, it's cultivating within us walking in the spirit. It's cultivating within us an intimate relationship to depend on God for everything. So I'm just going to read this word, and we're going to start out here. Time is here for the biggest clash of hell on earth versus heaven on earth and above the earth. The underlayers of hell are being drained, and the devil is bringing his hordes up to do his bidding. He is aware that at this time, my church, the sleeping giant, is woke and is coming to take back all that the hordes of hell and the fallen nature has destroyed. Hell and the flesh versus heaven and the spirit. The soul is in the middle. But I have something planned that the devil doesn't know. All of his scouting and preparation is going to come back to him void. He is getting a wake-up call through my church, through the sleeping giant. In this now, right now season, hell is trembling. Heaven is having her say on this earth, and my church is going to be getting that final touch to spark that last bit of obedience needed to go all the way. I am not going to allow the torment to continue, little ones. This is it. This is the fight. The bell is about to ring. Hold on. Now, I thought that was awesome. Very exciting. God's been, he's moved so many different mountains in all of our lives we kind of are able to know what each one is going through. And we can see that God has been totally faithful to all of us. Amazingly so. Supernaturally faithful. And so I was, I was quickened to this scripture. And this scripture is going to go in. This is the scripture for right now. This is the scripture for this word. And this is the scripture for what God wants us to hear. And it's Ephesians 3 verses 8 through 11. And this is the Amplified Classic Version. Now, Paul was talking about the purpose behind God's grace on the church. And we're going to pick up from there. So Paul talking about the purpose of God's touch on the church. This grace, favor, privilege was granted and graciously entrusted to proclaim to the Gentiles the unending, boundless, fathomless, incalculable, and exhaustless riches of Christ, wealth which no human being could have searched out. Now, and, and just to underline that, like, have you, have you all read in the scriptures? It's in Colossians. It's through different chapters. 
but the riches of being in Christ. It's important to always realize who Jesus is. He's everything that God sees himself as in a being. So everything that ever could be created, everything that ever could be needed is all in Jesus and so much more. It's all in him for anything we need in this life, but then in anything above the heavens, like it's all in Jesus. Picking back up. Also to enlighten all men and make plain to them what is the plan regarding the Gentiles and providing for the salvation of all men. And what that is pretty much saying is the restoration of humanity to God. This is all being put in place, the restoration of humanity to God and what that means. Of the mystery kept hidden through the ages and concealed until now in the mind of God who created all things by Jesus. So here's the purpose. The purpose is that through the church, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God in all its infinite variety and innumerable aspects might now be made known to the angelic rulers and authorities, principalities and powers in the heavenly sphere. Now that, that's a huge statement, and that is showing the true purpose of the church. And, you know, God's been telling us for a while now, don't grow weary. The glory is coming. So he's been purging us. He's been getting us ready. And he's been getting us ready to contain what he wants us to contain in this. And, and let's, let's kind of look at that last part right there. The many-sided wisdom of God in all of its infinite variety and innumerable aspects might now be made known to the angelic rulers and authorities in the heavenly sphere. So what God's going to be giving us, what God's going to be using us to do, is it's going to make his power and his plan known to principalities, known to high-ranking devils. And also, it seems to indicate in that scripture that even heaven, heavenly angels are going to see something that they have not yet seen yet. They're going to see what the church really is. And, you know, you've all probably heard stories, but angels, like they look, they look on us and, and they're just so amazed. And it's like they can see us in our weakness. And to them, it's like, th this is insane. A being made in the image of God with all this potential is this week right now. Like, I think that's a part of why they get so puzzled. But we should look through the eyes of Christ and realize who we really are. And then I think we'll start to understand why at times angels, you know, you hear stories like that. Now, to pick back up, this is in accordance with the terms of the eternal and timeless purpose, which he has realized and carried into effect in the person of Jesus Christ, in whom, because of our faith in him, we dare to have the boldness, courage, and confidence of free access and unreserved approach to God with freedom and without fear. Now, pretty much what this loaded scripture is saying, that this is the time to receive revelation and strategies from God. And those of you that were here during the AM service today, God shared that he has strategies for each of us. And it was funny that Pastor Barbara heard him laughing, because I think he's laughing because he realizes how deep this is, how much it's going to put you over the top, and he knows the strategies that he's going to reveal to you, how that's going to destroy hell and how that's going to allow the body to function how it was meant to function, which is the body of Christ. So this season we are in and starting to walk through was made possible by Jesus's work here. And it's Ephesians 4, verses 8 through 12. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive he led a train of vanquished foes and he bestowed gifts on men so that saying right there he led captivity captive he led everything that ever held you prisoner he held he now holds that prisoner so we have no excuse to stay in bondage if we're in relationship to jesus because that right there says any form of captivity that you will ever come into he already made that way out he did that Picking back up, but he ascended. Now, what can this be? What can this he ascended mean? But that he had previously descended from the heights of heaven 
into the depths, the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the very same as he who also ascended high above all the heavens, that he, his presence, might fill all things, the whole universe, from the lowest to the highest. And now when we're going to read this next thing, we're going to see what he did that for, why he went to the cross, and what he went down to reclaim. And it goes like this, And his gifts were varied. He himself appointed and gave men to each of us, some to be apostles, special messengers, some to be prophets, inspired preachers and expounders, some evangelists, preachers of the gospel, traveling missionaries, and some pastors. His intention was the perfecting and full equipping of the saints, his consecrated people, that they should do the work of ministering toward building up Christ's body, the church. So we can understand that God has a special nugget to give to each one of you. And it could very well be volumes, and it most likely will be volumes. But I think God's been trying to get us out of the box. He's been trying to get us out of religion because that religion is going to want to hold on to what God's telling us. But through his grace and through his teaching, he's try he's, he is wanting spirit to call to spirit so that we can flow in what he has. Because things are, are going to get pretty miraculous. I mean, they're going to be pretty supernatural. So he's been kind of chipping away at the religious structure of the church. And it's time that we step into this scripture. I mean, this, this scripture has been waiting until now. The whole idea of that he went down, he descended to bring back gifts. And these gifts are you. And more than you, it's the you that you really are. It's not the you that the world has made you. It's not the world. Uh, it's not the you that woundedness has made you. But it's the you as he sees you. So all these yous, all these uses, this us, this collective us, that is the body of Christ. And can we understand why, starting this whole thing out, God was pretty much saying that hell is trembling, it's because we are realizing who we are, individually. And then that realized individual is going to connect with other pieces of Christ, other parts of the body, and then become his body. And who remembers, you know, and we've kind of been in a, in a pretty long season, some of us, of getting it together. And God has said, the enemy is trying to take you out now because he realizes that he won't have you anymore. Because he re realizes what God's going to do through us and what God's going to do for us and what God's going to give us. So that uh, that Ephesians 10, I just think that that is such a now scripture, and it is it's going to need us um, not having our own objectives and our own agendas, because how are we going to use our own agendas to fight principalities in high places? We would be destroyed. And this is it's such a high call that these huge entities, these huge spirit beings, these principalities, they're going to be the focus of the church. God wanting to take these things down because these things is what has people in bondage. These huge spiritual rulers in high places, this is what's keeping regions bound. There's just such a depth to all this spiritual truth. And I, I feel that a huge part of what God is saying in this is that he wants us to become spiritually aware and he wants to teach us how to navigate the spirit realm because this is a spiritual battle. So we are going to be trusted with heaven's secrets. With this, God will use us to work with heaven's angelic and work against hell's fallen rulers. You can go down just a little bit, Nancy. So speaking on the knowledge of heaven given to believers, let's, let's get a viewpoint of uh, how Jesus views this knowledge, how precious it really is, and what he's going to do to a vessel that wants this knowledge and then stewards this knowledge. Let's look at Matthew 3, verse 11. He replied, the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them, referring to unbelievers. 
Whoever has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. And, you know, that you're, you're going to get stolen from the devil if you're not walking in spiritual knowledge. I think that that's a, that's a piece of what's being said there. And God can't entrust to you something that you're going to use your flesh to use. That's because the devil works through the flesh. And if, you're, if we're using our own understanding and our own flesh to do spiritual things, as it was taught about a month and a half ago, there was a teaching here on soul power versus spirit power. And I'm going to get into this a little more late, uh, late in this teaching. But that whole idea of trying to do anything spiritual without having a resurrected spirit that only the Holy Spirit can allow you to do is straight up witchcraft, and it's what the devil wants. There's so many people in the world that are walking down spiritual paths without the Holy Spirit, and that's the biggest wide open door to hell and to deception. So let's, let's look at Ephesians 1, starting at verse 7. In him we have redemption, deliverance, and salvation through his blood, the remission, forgiveness of our offenses, in accordance with the riches and the generosity of his gracious favor, which he lavished upon us in every kind of wisdom and understanding. So that right there is telling you every kind of wisdom and understanding is included within God's grace and within God's favor. And it's for you. Every kind of wisdom and understanding is for you. Let's look at another scripture here, Ephesians 1.10. He planned for the maturity of the times and the climax of the ages to unify all things and head them up and consummate them in Christ, both things in heaven and things on earth. So when it's talking about the maturity of times and the climax of the ages, we are so in that time right now. If you've listened to Pastor Barber's recent sermons, it's all, it's all about timing and, and we're going to look at what hour we are in, as she, she taught a couple uh, Sundays ago, I believe. And this is pretty much saying it is showdown time. Like, things are going to get awesome, and fear can't have a place in us because stuff is, is going to be moving so heavily, but God's going to see us through. So I'm going to go back to a, a line from that prophetic word. And it says, I am not going to allow the torment to continue, little ones. This is it. This is the fight. This, the bell is about to ring. Hold on. So that goes right into this is the climax of the ages to unify all things. And it's pretty much like, you know, the devil has had his way for so long. And God, in his patient long suffering, is he's been waiting for this time. We are right on the brink of participating with God to allow him to work through us and destroy all of the works that hell has stored up in the people. So, and, and this right here, the 11th hour and the 12th hour that follows, this is directly from Pastor Barbara's teaching. And this is how God sees our time. The previous hours, 1 through 10, are all pretty much Old Testament. The New Testament started in the 11th hour. The 11th hour includes the time from Christ's resurrection unto his ascension into heaven. The 12th hour began when Christ ascended into heaven and poured out his spirit upon the church on the day of the fulfillment of Pentecost. So clearly, we are in the final hour. What does hell have planned to counter heaven during this final hour? Let's look at 1 John chapter 2, starting at verse 18. Children, it is the last hour. And just as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have appeared. This is how we know that it is the last hour. They went on from us, but they did not belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. 
but their departure made it clear that none of them belonged to us. That right there is also talking of discernment. The enemy's camp is well aware what time it is and looks to answer all that God and heaven brings on the scene. So after the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ came, there was an answer from hell, and that is the Antichrist spirit. So the Antichrist role is, is to deceive believers that they are operating in the spirit and to keep the world in false spirituality while thinking it's the truth. Antichrist is in opposition to Christ and also the counterfeit and false Christ. Now, before I came to Jesus, I was in a 10-year period of spiritual searching because I didn't find God in religion, and that was a good thing because he's not there. But a not-so-good thing is it led me down a path for looking of spiritual power, for looking for truth, and all kind of different things. And there's an umbrella term for this. It's called the New Age. And I was into searching for spiritual truths. Now, religion had not clearly defined to me what a spiritual reality that Christ provides. That was never defined for me, or else I would not, I would not have went off on that side road. But I did. And God, in his goodness, rescued me from that. But I did many different alternative spiritual things, one of which was there's something called La Ho Chi, and it's a, I believe it's a, it's a Chinese energy healing type thing. So I got involved in this. And from that, and from all the other holes I opened, I had to get a lot of deliverance here from all those insane doors that were open and it's amazing what was in me from all this stuff but what 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 was the main character that needed to get out of me that was present from all this the antichrist spirit i had a huge antichrist spirit from all of that dabbling so anything spiritual that you do that's not rooted in christ after first having a resurrected spirit through the holy spirit it is of the Antichrist, it is of hell, and it is false. The devil is all about illegally tapping into the human spirit to use the light in us for his perverted use. All false light, false religion, false spirituality will house the Antichrist spirit. Now this is funny. Did did you all know what Lucifer means, where it comes from? Lucifer comes from the Hebrew word transliterated as Hallel. And according to the King James Version based Strong's Concordance, means shining one, light bearer. Let's look at 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Now, it's pretty safe to say that in all of existence, there was most likely never a being so full of light as God's anointed cherub, Lucifer. He was praising and worshiping God. He was leading all of these different characteristics. So he would know a thing or two about light. And he probably missed it. So he counterfeited it. And we can just imagine the deep anger in the devil and the deep anger in him to cause him to come against the light, the truth, all these things, because they were all things that he used to be at pretty much the highest point that you could be without being God. And so it's, it's just interesting to get that perspective of, of Satan. So I have to say this too. So in the New Age movement, in spiritual seeking people, there's a term. That term is called light worker. I wanted to be a light worker. It sounded cool. It sounded like I would get protection. It sounded like I could be a better person. Many things. And a lot of people in the new age, you know, they're oblivious. They don't know. They're, they're wounded from religion. The last thing they want to hear is Jesus in the, in the world's or in the uh, church's perspective. And 
there's just so much deception in there that it's good to always remember when you encounter someone that that is in that to do it with mercy and grace because they really don't know the deception and it is such a great deception so i wanted to be a light worker i i wanted to use that but isn't it funny that it would have been total false light that i was working through and katie souza has a very cool teaching and pr and pretty much getting on the church of you let the new age and you let white witches or whatever they turn themselves steal the light from christianity we are the true light and then all of this fake stuff is out there and the church is either weirded out by it because they're not sure of the light or not participate you know not participating in it at all or they are uh, somewhat there's somewhat a mixture so how do we keep ourselves in check of this antichrist spirit of not falling into that let's look at second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8 and the lawless one is kind of used as a synonym for the antichrist and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming the coming of the lawless one is according to the works of satan with all power signs and lying wonders so we're going to be stepping out into deep spiritual waters and god's going to do miraculous things through us but it's important to always know that the, that the devil has a counterfeit and we're going to have to lead people out of the counterfeit and we're going to have to trust god and yield to god that we don't become involved in the counterfeit all right let's let's pick up on ephesians 5 verse 8 for ye were sometimes darkness but now are ye light in the lord walk as children of light now that's that's a cool scripture because it says you were sometimes darkness so that talks about a mixture but now you are light in the lord so it's not saying you know you are in the light which we are but it, it's saying you are light we are light there's kind of a, a different intimacy when you are something compared to when you're affected by something we are that something we are that light in hebrews 1 3 it says this this is in the amplified classic he is the sole expression of the glory of god talking about jesus the light being the outraying or radiance of the divine so jesus is the light being the true being of light that's what he is and jesus talks a little more about the subject of light here in luke 11 verses 34 through 35 your eye is the lamp of your body when your vision is clear your whole body is full of light but when it is poor your body is full of darkness be careful then that the light within you is not darkness now have you ever thought about that be careful then the light within you is not darkness and it's like how can light be darkness there, there's light in me how can that also be darkness and that that right there is talking about false light the light in you can fool others and yourself but not god god illuminates you and will show you the faults in you so that up there talking about be careful that the light within you is not darkness that's talking about self-deception that's talking about believing something is good is prized is for the betterment of yourself and others but really it's not so we are protected from this by loving the truth and, and let's look at second thessalonians 2 10. he will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them and earlier when i was referring to second thessalonians it got cut off a, a little bit and what i was getting to was that point right there because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them so that that question i posed of how do we keep ourselves in check 
it's said right there in Second Thessalonians 2.10, loving the truth, because that would save us. Loving Jesus would save us, not loving what he does through us, because he's going to be doing, there's going to be so, much, so many things going on, but it's loving him. And let, let, let's go back to uh, the original prophetic word, and we'll go on from there. But I have something planned that the devil doesn't know. All of his scouting and preparation is going to come back to him void. So hell has been trying to answer heaven's movements. But God wants to give us revelation that will supersede every bit of any revelation the devil's got. And the, the kingdom of hell is very organized, if, if you are aware of Satanists and that whole thing, and people that are able to see in the spirit realm during, to, during deliverance and all types of things. The devil is meticulous in scouting, scouting spirits, trying to do all this type of homework, trying to see what you are going to do, how you're going to do it, what you like, what you don't like, all kind of things to get info on you to try to take you out. And he will take us out unless we're in this, the spirit. So, so God's been pretty much saying that every effort of hell is going to be overturned when you allow God to download into you these, these things. And on the subject of the spirit, let's look at the, what the word says in 1 John 3, verse 7. Do not be amazed that I said, you must be born again. And this is Jesus talking. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born in the Spirit. And that right there is God's answer to anything the devil could possibly do. Right there. The devil's not going to see it coming, and he's not going to see it leaving him. He's just going to stand around wondering what happened, wondering what happened to all of his intel, all those things God wants to do for us. And, you know, so the devil is counting on that we are being a mixture. And a huge testimony for me is coming out of being a mixture, coming out of wanting things for myself, coming out of the old nature. And God wanting to get us out of that is such a supreme act of love, but it's necessary for this huge fulfillment for this final hour of being able to participate in these huge spiritual things, because these are huge spiritual things. So God called the church the sleeping giant, because as a whole, we were using our own faculties and self-focuses to try to work for God. And that's, that's what we need to stop doing. Hell and the flesh versus heaven and the spirit. The soul is in the middle. But I have something planned that the devil doesn't know. And that is so exciting, is that not? So God is wanting us discerning the times and the hour and the day-to-day -day flow and change of what is going on. Hell tries so hard to anticipate heaven and can if we are not completely spirit-led and working in that mixture. God wants his body to be anticipating. All we have to do is ask and flow in the Spirit. Commune with God. Acting in the nature of God equals walking in the Spirit. Now we can see God has told us so many times that in different prophetic words spoken over people, we're, we're always able to glean certain things in the heart of God. But he's been saying, the devil's afraid of you. What are you doing? If you realize who you really were, you would not look at all to the past. You would realize that this future, who you really are, if you would see through my eyes who you really are, your life would be totally changed. And the devil is so afraid because the devil knows that this, this revelation is coming. This new relationship with God is coming. And if, if we sup with God, get with him, for these strategies that he has for us, God's going to catch us up entirely with what he's doing. So let's, let's look at Psalm 139, starting at verse 14. I will praise you, 
for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and I know this very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All my days were written in your book and ordained for me before one of them came to be. Now, isn't that interesting? Fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, it, it's like we're wonderfully made for God, for, for ourselves. You know, we, there's, there's a godly way to love yourself and enjoy who you are that's actually necessary in, in order to, to be a productive person and to house the love of God. You first need to love yourself. So that's, that's where that wonderfully made comes from. Being fearfully made is against the devil. Who we really are in Christ scares the devil so much because it means his destruction. And that scripture really stuck out to me, and it's a deep, deep truth. And now going back to how God ended that initial word, my church is going to be getting that final touch to spark that last bit of obedience needed to go all the way. I am not going to allow the torment to continue, little ones. This is it. This is the fight. The bell is about to ring. Hold on. But that final touch, we need a final touch to spark that last bit of obedience needed to go all the way. There, there's this season, the time we're in right now, is letting God start to use us in our ministries. This is going on right now. We're doing this. But also, there's a little bit left that God's grace has been under. And he's wanting to use that grace to get us to the point that we need to be. And it's a all-or-nothing mentality of obedience to God and loving him and loving what he has for us. And when we love what he has for us, whether we think we should like it or not, that is going to be obedience. That is going to be the next level that the church needs to be in love with God, trusting him, and in that trust is loving what he's doing with us because it is to crush hell. It is to liberate all the captives. It is to have justice come back to this earth. And it's, it's interesting. You know, in the words, it says that all of creation groans, cries out for the children of God to be made manifest. We're not manifest yet. This is what God wants to do, to make us capable of becoming manifested sons and daughters of God. Because in that, that's what the body of Christ was meant to be built out of. And that's why God's having to purge, because a lot of members are not that. But God is getting us caught up to that. 